Hello to all of you. This is UC again, the head teacher and the proud presenter of PTA Puny. In this video, we're going to work on WFD, Write From Dictation, and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this task, from basic information up to strategies and tips and tricks. So stay around. Like our previous videos, this video also will be divided into two parts. In the first part, we're going to learn about some basic information of write from dictation. This will be the exam interface of WFD on the test day. You will hear an audio which will be one sentence, and you will hear this sentence only once. And your task is to type out the sentence in the answer box. Most of the sentences have around 10 to 11 words but you may also encounter some long sentences which have 13 to 14 words in the exam. There will be a seven second countdown before the audio begins to play so that you can get prepared. Below the answer box, you can see three cut, copy and paste buttons, which is not much useful in this question. You can use them to copy and paste words in the answer box. There are three to four WFT items in the exam. Except SST, all remaining questions in the listening section are group timed, which is between 30 to 43 minutes. And WFT is the last question typed in the whole listening section. So if you spend too much time in the other listening sections or questions, you will leave yourself no time to finish WFT, which will be a tragedy because WFD is one of the most important tasks in PTE. It contributes massively to writing and listening scores. As you can see from this table, it contributes 28% to PTE writing and 25% to PTE listening. So it's huge, isn't it? It's almost impossible to get a good score in writing or listening if you don't have time to finish WFD. So, Time management in the listening section is very important. Make sure you leave at least one to two minutes for each WFD item. Now let's learn about the marking criteria of this task. Write from dictation is scored by counting the number of correct words in the response. You will get one point for each correct word and spelled correctly, and zero point for each incorrect or misspelled word. So, you will have to get the word right and the spelling right. Let's see an example. The sentence in the question is, During the war, children suffered from a deficiency of food. There are in total 10 words in the question, so the maximum score for this question is 10. If my answer is like the following, During the war, children suffered, this has been spelled wrongly, from deficiency of food. I only get eight words correct, so my score is eight. I spelled the word suffered wrongly and I missed the word A before deficiency. I know you must have some doubts over certain tricky cases. First of all, does punctuation matter? The short answer is no. As shown in the example sentence, points will not be deducted from missing a comma in the middle. However, we suggest you to follow the standard conventions. At least put the full stop at the end of the sentence. The second question is, does sequence matter? Again, the answer is no. In the score guide, there is no mentioning of the sequence, which is different from repeat sentence. In repeat sentence, we have to repeat the sentence in the correct order. But in write from dictation, we will still be awarded marks even if the words are in the wrong order. For example, in our second sentence, the words suffered from A have been wrongly placed at the end, but we can still receive full marks. Next question. Will I lose marks if I forget to capitalize some words? No. If you forget to capitalize the initials, don't worry. No points will be deducted. But again, we suggest you to follow standard conventions. The scoring system is subject to change at any time so it's best to try your best to capitalize the first word and proper nouns. For example, in the sentence, during the war, children suffered from a deficiency of food. 
The letter D in the first word during should be capitalized, and proper nouns like America, January, also need to be capitalized. Is it recommended to use British spelling or American spelling? Both are acceptable, as long as you keep the spelling consistent within the same question. For example, in the first example sentence, center, spelled with T-R-E, is British spelling. In the second sentence, center, spelled with T-E-R, is American spelling. Both sentences will be able to score full marks. Next, can we write numbers in digit or do we have to write in words? The answer is that both are acceptable. If the speaker said it's, which is a contraction, can I write it in full form, it is? The answer is no. You must type exactly what the speaker said. When the speaker said the phrase in contraction, you have to write a contraction. If the speaker said the phrase in full form, then you must write the full form. You will lose marks if you do otherwise. In the example, if you write it is instead of it's, you will lose one mark. And if you write I've instead of I have, you will lose another two marks. Some of you may question whether adding words will have an impact on the listening and writing scores. To answer this question, we have done an experiment on it. On the left, it is the control group. We have answered all WFT questions with 100% correct answers, and we got 43 in listening and 48 in writing. On the right, it is the experimental group. We have added three incorrect words to each WFT answer, and we got 43 in listening and 48 in writing as well. The same as our control group. Therefore, it's safe to say that adding three words in each WFT answer will not cause us losing any marks. However, we do not recommend adding too many words because it might be a bit risky to go too far in the real exams, especially for such an important question type. And Pearson's scoring algorithm is constantly being updated and may become stricter anytime. So it is not recommended to game the system too much by adding too many words. Now, let's take a look at the correctness requirements for different target scores. If your target score is 79 or above, try to aim for getting at least 80% of the marks in WFD. This means that you can have at most one to two words wrong in each WFD question. If your target score is 65 or above, you should aim to get at least 70% of the marks. This means that you can have at most three to four words wrong in each WFT question. And if your target score is 50 or above, you should aim to get at least 50% of the marks. That means that you need to get at least half of the words correct. After knowing the basic information of writing from dictation, let's get to the second part, learning the exam strategies. The first thing you should know about WFD is that it is not a test of memory. Do not try to memorize each individual word when listening. It's much more easier to remember if you understand the sentence. Let's listen to two sentences. Try to write down what you hear. Please have a pen and paper ready, or if you plan to type on the screen, have your typing software ready. If you need more time to prepare, you can pause the video here. Okay, be prepared. I'm going to play the audio. Students' skills to help will course pronunciation there improve the How did it go? How many words have you written down? Now, I'm going to play the second audio, and please get prepared to write down what you hear. Ready? Go. The course will help students to improve their pronunciation skills. Which question do you think you did better? The first or the second? In fact, two sentences contain the same words, just in different order. The first sentence is, 
student skills to help with course pronunciation there improve the. The second sentence is, the course will help students to improve their pronunciation skills. The sentence length and the vocabulary are exactly the same, but I'm sure most of you did much better in the second sentence, right? Words in the first sentence are in a random order. The first sentence doesn't make any sense at all. The second sentence is much more understandable, thus much easier to remember. From this little experiment, we can see that WFD is not a test of memory. In most cases, it is not that your memory is bad, which makes you not able to write down most of the words. It's because you don't understand the sentence. Therefore, you should listen carefully and try to understand what you hear, and don't do anything else when you listen, otherwise you may miss some words. Next, let's have a look at our second strategy. Do not trust your ear. Let's listen to another three sentences. Be prepared. If you need more time, you can pause the video here. Are you ready? Okay. I'm going to play the first one. The arrival of armed police made the students disperse. Now, I'm going to play the second audio. Again, if you need more time, you can pause the video here. Ready? Let's go. Fish can take in oxygen when they are underwater. Now, I'm going to play the third audio. Again, if you need more time, you can pause the video here. Ready? Go. She's searching for a subject matter for her new book. I believe we all have our answers. Now, let's look at the first sentence together. This may be what you heard. The arrival of armed police, as ARM, made the students disperse. But the correct answer is, the arrival of armed with ED at the end, armed police made the students disperse. Some students may say, I'm sure I only heard the pronunciation of arm. I didn't hear the sound of ED at the end at all. To answer this question, we need to introduce a very common pronunciation rule, plosion loss. Speech sounds are seldom pronounced in isolation. They are often linked together, sounding more fluent and natural. One of the pronunciation rules is that when two plosives, for example, the sound of t, d, p, b, k, and g are next to each other, there is a complete loss of plosion in the first plosive. For example, the d sound in the word armed and the p sound in the word police are next to each other, so there is a complete loss of plosion in the first sound, d. It sounds like arm police. This is why you only hear the sound of arm without the sound of ed at the end. Now, let's move on to the next question. Did any of you write down taking as T-A-K-I-N-G instead of two words take in? These two forms sound pretty much the same. Because the sound K from the word take and the sound in from the word in blend together so they sound like they're just one word, taking. This is the rule of linking sounds. When one word ends with a consonant sound, and the following word starts with a vowel sound, the two sounds are often linked together. When linking occurs, the two words flow together and sound like one single word. For example, an elephant is pronounced as an elephant. An apple is pronounced as an apple. Let's have a look at the third one. This may be what you heard. She, as S-H-E, searching for subject matter for her new book. But the correct answer is she's with an apostrophe and an S at the end. 
searching for a subject matter for her new book. However, you may say that you don't hear the sound s after the word she. This is because the pronunciation rule double sounds applies here. Double sounds happens when a word finishes with a consonant and the next word begins with the same consonant. In this situation, we pronounce the consonant only once. So here, the word she's ends with a consonant sound s and the next word searching begins with another s sound. We only pronounce the sound s once. She's searching. Similarly, the phrase nice scarf is pronounced as nice scarf. And the phrase pink car is pronounced as pink car. What I'm trying to tell you is that you cannot trust your ear. The speaker often uses a simulation, deletion, linking, and etc. in connected speech, so what you heard is often different from what is correct. But if our ear is unreliable, what can we rely on to determine the correct answers? The answer is grammar check. Grammar check can help us spot the errors and tell us the correct words. One thing we can be certain of is that all exam sentences must be grammatically correct. With this understanding, let's have a look at our first sentence. How can we determine the right answer using grammar check? The arrival of armed police made the students disperse. What's the word class of arm here? If the word arm is a noun, meaning a part of our body or weapon, then what does the phrase armed police mean? The police of a part of our body? Weapon police? It doesn't make any sense. If the word arm is a verb, then there will be two verbs in this sentence. One is arm and another one is mate. But we all know that there can be only one verb in a simple sentence. Then this sentence becomes incorrect in terms of grammar. So it has to be a parasitical adjective a modifier to modify the word police. The past participle form of arm is armed. Someone who is armed is carrying a weapon. Armed police means police who are carrying weapons. It makes perfect sense semantically and grammatically. So the correct word here must be armed with ed at the end. Let's look at the second sentence. Fish can take in oxygen when they are underwater. Let's focus on the part can taking. The word can is a modal verb that needs to be followed by a verb in its original form, in its base form. Taking with ing is not an original form, but a participle form, so it is not grammatically correct. The correct answer should be two words, take in. Let's look at the third sentence. She's searching for a subject matter for her new book. There is a grammar error in this sentence. This sentence is incomplete. A predicate or a verb is missing here. The complete meaning must be, she is searching. The speaker said it in its contracted form, she's. Due to the use of various pronunciation rules, what we hear is often different from what is correct. Luckily, Grammar check can help us to find errors and avoid unconscious loss of marks. So always remember to check the grammar of our sentences before submitting. If our answer is not grammatically correct, we must have written some words wrongly. After the grammar check, if you're still not sure about some certain words, such as their tenses, spellings, singular or plural forms, and so forth, you can write down both of your guesses. As we have mentioned earlier, you can write up to three additional words without any loss of marks. Let's take this sentence as an example. She's searching for a subject matter for her new book. If you're not sure whether the speaker said she's or she is, you can write both. If you're not sure whether the final word book is singular or plural, you can write both book and books. Just remember that you can safely add maximum three words. It's not recommended to add more words than that. As we have mentioned earlier, 
we should not try to memorize the sentence word by word and should try to understand the sentence. But I have to admit that, even with understanding, we can still forget some parts of the sentence. How can we deal with that? Now, I will teach you the four steps of answering by APUNY, the secret strategy to prolong your memory. Step 1. Listen carefully to the audio and try to understand the sentence. As we have mentioned in our first strategy, it's much easier to remember if you understand the sentence. Let me use a WFD question to demonstrate what I meant. I'm going to play an audio now. Pay attention to the meaning of the sentence. The hypothesis needs to be tested in a more rigorous way. Step 2. This is a very important step. Quickly recall in mind. That is to say, Replay the audio in your mind rather than rushing to write it out. You may have heard of the theory of memory curve. Repeating is a crucial factor to help you remember something for a long time. For example, I will replay the sound and the tune of the audio I heard just now. The hypothesis needs to be tested in a more rigorous way. When we finished recalling in step 3, we need to write or type out all words as quickly as we can. If you made a mistake, just move on. Don't correct yourself. The key here is to type out all words as fast as we can before we forget any words. For example, you can see from the answer I typed out in this step, I have made a lot of spelling mistakes when I wrote, like the words hypothesis and need, but I didn't stop to correct them, because once I stop to check or correct, I may forget the rest of the content. And the last step, we need to complete the sentence. Now, it's the time to correct our spellings. First, we need to capitalize the first letter, T, of the first word, the. Some may ask, what if I'm not sure if there is another word before the? Our suggestion is still to follow the standard conventions. Always capitalize the first letter of a sentence. And we need to complete the spellings for hypothesis, neat, and rigorous. Don't forget a full stop at the end of the sentence. But we're not done yet. Remember in strategy number two, we mentioned that we can't trust our ear. Sometimes if we wrote only according to what we heard from the audio, our sentence may be grammatically wrong. That means we must be missing something or writing some words wrong. Therefore, after completing the spelling of words, we need to go over the sentence again and use our grammar knowledge to add any missing words, for example, articles, prepositions, and so forth, and to correct the forms of the verbs and nouns. In this sentence, the subject here hypothesis is singular, so the verb need should be changed to its singular form, needs. Test should be changed to tested because a past participle is required after the auxiliary verb be to express passive voice. Before the phrase more rigorous way, there should be an indefinite article, a, because the word way is a singular and countable noun. But if you're not sure whether the speaker said way or ways, the plural form, we can write both forms in our answer. And since I'm almost not sure of the spelling of hypothesis, I added one more word with another possible spelling. Make sure you practice a lot and follow these four steps of answering. This can guarantee you receiving the maximum number of points in WFD. We have talked so much about various WFD strategies we can apply in the exam, but all of those strategies rely on our listening skills. We have to understand the sentences. What if our listening skill is weak? How can we improve that? Now, I will teach the APUNY AWFD drill, the daily practice to improve your WFD and listening understanding skills. Firstly, we need to select 10 WFD questions as a set. Then, in step two, we start listening to the first question and follow the four steps of answering method to practice it. In this step, you can play the audio multiple times until you cannot write any more words. For example, let's listen to this sentence. 
The factory will compensate its workers if they are hurt at work. After listening to this for the first time and using the four steps of answering, because my listening skill is weak, I only wrote down a few words. The factory will work it. So I played the audio again. The factory will compensate its workers if they are hurt at work. I wrote down a few more words. Then I play again and again until I cannot write any more words. In step 3, we need to check the answer and learn why we didn't get all words correct. Is it because we don't know the word or we know the word but we are not familiar with its pronunciation? And from some other words, we may have misspelled or got the word forms wrong. Then we need to learn its spelling and related grammar points. For example, I didn't write down the word compensate in step 2. That's because I don't know the word, so I need to look it up in a dictionary to learn the pronunciation, meaning, and spelling of it. And I wrote worker instead of workers. This can be avoided by analyzing the context of the sentence. There can't be only one worker in the factory, so it should be workers with S signaling multiple workers. After learning our mistakes, we can move on to the next question and repeat step 2 and 3 for that question. When we have finished practicing the entire set using this method, we need to repeat the whole set again starting from the first question to see if we have really learned these sentences. If we are not 100% correct in these 10 sentences or questions, we need to repeat the whole set again and again until we get all sentences 100% correct. This APUNE WFT drill is not an easy method. It does require quite a bit of effort to practice only 10 or 20 questions. But without hard work, nothing grows but weeds. Consistently practice with APUNE WFT drill, you will soon see your listening skills improve and your marks in WFT increase. Now let's summarize what we just talked about. We need to listen carefully and understand the meaning of WFD sentences. Do not just memorize each individual words. Do not blindly trust your ear. Native speakers often use a simulation, deletion, linking, and etc. in connected speech, so what you heard is often different from what is correct. You need to use grammar knowledge to help you determine the correct words. If you're not sure about some words in your answer, you can add all possible options in your answer. You can safely add three words without losing any marks in listening and writing. Practice and familiarize yourself with the four steps of answering. This can help you prolong your memory and secure the maximum number of points you can get. And in your daily practice, practice with APUNE WFT drill at least three sets a day. This can help you to improve your basic listening skills. Last but not least, remember that WFT is the final question type in the PTE exam. It's one of the most important question types in the whole exam. Make sure you have enough time to complete all questions. Leave at least five to six minutes for this question type. Okay, everyone, that's all for today's lesson on Write from Dictation. You are recommended to visit www.apuni.com to learn PTE the smart way with more online courses, practices, and mock tests. This is UC, the head teacher here at APUNI. See you next time.